me. Julius Randle, he doesn't seem to just quite get it. He takes such reckless shots. He has no understanding of situation. He makes the game so much harder for himself. Now, I did like his aggression. When he got smaller defenders on him, many times he tried to go to the rim, tried to go into defender's chest, tried to get into that mid-range area and fall away. But overall, his decisions, his turnovers are so casual, and his body language after he commits a turnover, like, for example, in the first quarter, he handed the ball off to Brunson, and it was such a lazy little bounce pass, stolen, and he didn't even get back on D. And it was just uh, egregious. And immediately you could see Tibbs' strategy defensively, Double team Jimmy Butler, make anybody but Jimmy beat you. Anybody. Blitz him on pick and rolls. Anyone but Jimmy. You saw Gabe Vincent get a bunch of open shots early and he didn't hit them. Max Struess was getting open shots. Kevin Love was getting open shots. But Kevin Love was actually making them. And Kevin fucking Love with his freaking outlet passes. Oh my God. Can't believe the way he's been playing in these playoffs. Do it. Score after the first quarter was 31-30 in favor of the Heat. They started out the better side, but the Knicks kind of closed that gap to end the first. Second quarter, though, the Knicks' offense was just putrid. 18-25, they lost that one. And I'm not going to lie, there was a weird thing with my cable box tonight. So I missed the entire second quarter. So I'm apologies to all Knicks and Heat fans. I didn't get to watch it. But the Heat went to the half up 56-48. to Knicks are still in striking distance. And I saw Jalen Brunson, a lot of him trying to be the, you know, the ball handler and pick and roll. And he was hitting big time shots. I mean, every time it felt like they just needed something to just stay in the game, Brunson seemed to hit a shot from mid range. He didn't really have his three ball going that much, just two for seven from deep. And RJ Barrett wasn't bad either. He got to the basket a couple of times and was fairly aggressive. Um, Randall was also efficient, but struggled with foul trouble, offensive fouls, turnovers, but mainly. Again, it was that heat bench making the difference, the supporting cast. You know, the Knicks are going to let other guys beat them, and these other guys are beating them. I've never seen anything like this before, where a supporting cast just turns up like this in the playoffs. You know, heat culture is a real thing, man. Spo does a great job getting the most out of every player. Like, for example, Gabe Vincent. You know, how many players from UCSB are in the NBA ever? He finds a role for these guys. Now, Gabe Vincent... In this game, he was one for seven. Not the best game to use him as an example. But like Max Struess, another great game. Kyle Lowry, everybody was saying he was done. He had a terrible playoffs last year. Looked injured this regular season. He had bad moments. He's been phenomenal in these playoffs. Great in the pick and roll. Showing his experience. Showing his poise. Playing good defense. How about Kevin Love? Looking like fucking Aaron Rodgers out there. What is going on here? I can't believe what I'm seeing. You know, the Heat are an eighth seed. I get it. You know, they could be the first team uh, since the 99 Knicks to make the finals as an eighth seed. But they were the seventh seed, I do want to say. And they were in the race to get the sixth seed till late in the season. So they are more of a seventh seed than an eighth seed to me. But, you know, it's still being picky. Regardless, it's still remarkable what they're doing. And it's led by Jimmy Butler. Like, the fact of the matter is they have the best player in this series. And I had that moment. You know, there's a moment in every series to me when you can feel that one team is better. And when it it's just game after game, you see the role players from Miami playing better than the Knicks ones, and you just don't fear the Knicks role players making their open threes like you fear the Heat's role players making open threes. You just and they have the best player in the series, and they're the smarter team. You just know that they're the better team. Like I just realized that today, they're just the better team. The Knicks just don't have the basketball IQ, and I think Julius Randle really hurts that. I think you needed some quickly tonight. It was unfortunate that he didn't play. And the Knicks bench just didn't give him anything. Even Josh Hart, who's been really good in these playoffs, four points on two for six shooting, 0 for two from three. The Knicks bench had a combined 10 points. Caleb Martin had 10 points by himself. Kyle Lowry was so good in the pick and roll, so good making things happen. And the Knicks just kind of hung around. The Heat outscored them 34-33 going into the fourth. It was a nine-point game, and that's when everything just came crashing down for New York. There was a stretch where Miami really couldn't score and the Knicks couldn't capitalize. And it's so funny because it was the exact advantage that we thought the Knicks would have going into this series, the offensive glass. 
Remember, we saw the Heat get pulverized on the glass by Atlanta in that playing game. The Knicks killed the Cavs. They showed this toughness, this grit. The Heat were the first to every loose ball, multiple offensive rebounds. Barrett, Randall, Brunson, all these guys just getting beat on the glass. Are you the team that's down 2-1 or are you up 2-1? They were, I mean, and for Randall after the game to say maybe they just wanted it more and be serious about it, not even sarcastic. Man, if I were a Knicks fan, I would be fucking fuming at that. Honestly, it would be enough for me to say I don't want Julius Randall on this team anymore. Because for all the great things he does, and look, I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm not here to say that. But I don't think you're going to win a championship with him, one. I think Jalen Brunson honestly has a chance to be a number two on a championship team. He's a smart player. I thought he was really good, the best player on the floor for the Knicks in this one. But Randall, despite his efficient shooting game, you know, 20 points, nine rebounds, he had six turnovers and fouled out with three minutes left. He takes horrendous shots at the worst times. He posts up way too high. He catches the ball way too high. He's an offensive foul threat all the time because he wants to play face up instead of post up a lot. And he just does too much. I don't like Randall as the initiator in like pick and rolls. Like I just don't think that's good basketball, but whatever. And Mitchell Robinson doesn't look like the same assertive player on the glass that we saw him look like against Cleveland. Credit Bam Adebayo. He's outplaying him. But you also got to credit Spo. Jimmy Butler's been so lethal in drop coverage, and he torched Milwaukee so bad that they're blitzing him on the pick and roll. And you know what's happening? The backside of the Knicks' defense is having trouble rotating on the Bam, having trouble boxing out Bam. Because think about it. Mitchell Robinson gets pulled away from the paint. Besides Randall, you have wings trying to box out these other Heat players. And part of it, though, was just effort. Like, Caleb Martin is not super tall, but he's going up so high for these rebounds. And they're also making shots. So let's look at the offensive rebound disparity. That's what won him the game. No rebounds, no rings. And it's very fitting that Pat Riley, the president of basketball operations for the Heat, is the one that coined that. And I use it and will take that shit to my grave. No rebounds, no rings. That was the case in the Cavs series, and that's the case for the Knicks getting a taste of their own medicine, so much so that they will be knocked out of the playoffs because of it. 13-8 to eight in favor of the Heat. Look, experience is a part of this as well. When you have the best player in the series, you have a big advantage, but the role players are also playing better, and that's been huge. Let's read the lines. For the Knicks, they also turn the ball over. Let's see. 16 times. And that's not great, especially when the Heat only turned the well, 13 turnovers isn't great either. But the, the Heat had 22 points off their turnovers. It was just, you know, it's been a very physical series, a slow it down kind of pace. But they were playing with a faster pace, both teams in this one. The bench for the Knicks, four minutes for Deuce McBride, a donut, 0 for 2. Six minutes for Obi Toppin, who didn't play well in game three. Four points, two of four, 0 for 2 from three. Hartenstein, very quiet. I thought he had a good first half, I heard, but I didn't notice much in the second half. Just two points on 0 for 1 shooting. Josh Hart, very quiet. 0 for 2 from 3, 2 for 6 on the field, only played 22 minutes. Knicks fans, let me know if you think he should have played more. But the Knicks shot 49% from the field, so pretty good, but 32% from 3, 9 for 28, and they're about 35% on the season. They're just not a good three-point shooting team. So one thing for the Knicks this offseason, got to get more three-point shooters. And guys like Quinton Grimes have to keep improving that three-point shot. R.J. Barrett has to improve that three-point shot. Julius Randle, I would move on from him if I were the Knicks and try to get something because he is a good player. Mitchell Robinson, 33 minutes played, six points and seven rebounds. Four of those were offensive rebounds, so he didn't do a good job on the defensive glass. Part of it's because he's getting sucked out of the paint with Jimmy Butler in that pick and roll. Three of five for him. Not a good performance for me. And then Quinton Grimes. 42 minutes. Got 20 more minutes than Josh Hart. Nine points, five rebounds, two assists. I thought he did a decent job on Jimmy, but man, anytime Jimmy's one-on-one, -on -one, he's getting to the rim. Like, it's crazy. It's amazing the attention that he's garnering. He's getting the Heat players open shots every time. He's moving without the ball. He's posting up. It's just such a crazy difference from 2021 where the Bucs were going underneath every single screen, daring him to shoot, and he did not look confident scoring at all. It's amazing how different he's become in these two peak years he's had this year and last. 
But Grimes, three for eight from the field, three for seven from deep. R.J. Barrett, 35 minutes played. Actually a pretty solid bounce back game from him. 24 points, four rebounds, three assists. Knicks fans, let me know how you think he played. Nine for 16 from the field, three of five from three. Again, I missed the second quarter and the half of the third, so it's hard for me to evaluate defense for players as a whole. Julius Randle, 20 points, nine rebounds, three assists, six turnovers, also fouled out with three minutes to play. He was eight for 13 from the field, one for four from deep. And then Jalen Brunson, 32 points, four rebounds, 11 dimes on 10 for 21 shooting, two for seven from three, only one turnover. I thought he was awesome. Nobody besides Mitchell Robinson was in the plus for a plus minus for the Knicks. Don't think that says much. The Knicks only scored 20 points in the fourth. The Knicks only, I mean, the Heat only scored 19, but as I said, they just couldn't take advantage. Two quarters where they scored 20 points or less for New York. Their offense, clearly a bigger problem than their defense. You need better from the role players knocking down shots. They need a game where they can actually hit threes, and they're going to need quickly. Maybe even play Fournier or Rose. I don't know. The Heat went 10 deep. Cody Zeller played eight minutes. He had a good game three, but just two points in this one on one for two shooting. Haywood Highsmith, six minutes, two points, one for one shooting. Duncan Robinson came in for 11 minutes and just chucked up shots and missed them. Three points on one for eight shooting and one for seven from three. But the seven guys that did play for real, the starters, and then Lowry and Caleb Martin, just phenomenal. Gabe Vincent, to me, wasn't great. Heat fans, if he was playing better defense than I was giving him credit for, let me know. I think he was. The Heat's defense has been really impressive, I have to say. The Knicks aren't world beaters offensively. But the way they've been able to switch a lot and just hold their own in man-to-man and also just attack closeouts and just stick to the game plan. High IQ team, Miami. High IQ, and part of that's the coach. Top three coach in the league for me, Eric Spolstra. Top 20 coach of all time as well. I know he's voted in the top 15, but I'd have to really think about that. He probably is in there, but we'll see. Maybe I'll make a list one day and a video about it. Gabe Vincent, three points, five dimes, one for seven from the field, one for five from three. So just not the best shooting game from Gabe Vincent. Kevin Love. I'm so impressed with Kevin Love. Eight points, five boards, two assists, just amazing outlet passes, zero turnovers, shot 50%, three for six and two of five from three. He'll take that all day in 23 minutes of play. And then Caleb Martin, his athleticism, his effort, him attacking the offensive glass, him defending his physicality. It's been so good in these playoffs for Miami. It's been just, just a phenomenal 10 points and five boards. Three of those were offensive rebounds, keeping possessions alive, shot 50% from the field and 40 from three, four for eight, and two for five from deep. Amazing game from Caleb Martin. How about Kyle Lowry, who shot 66% from the field and 50% from deep? 15 points, five rebounds, four assists, and zero turnovers. He continues to look like prime Kyle Lowry. It's He adds to the collective IQ of the team. The Knicks are just outsmarted by the Heat in many ways and outexperienced. The Knicks have a good future, but as I said, Randall, I'm not rolling with him. Max Struess, another fantastic game. 16.6 boards, two assists, a steal, and a block. He's had a really good playoffs. He had the highest plus minus of any Miami Heat player with a plus eight, six for 13 from the field, and four for 10 from three. Just amazing from him. Both teams shot around 75% from the line. The Knicks shot 75%, 18 for 24. The Heat shot 73%, 16 for 22. And mind you, the Heat barely shot better from three than the Knicks, 13 for 39, just 33%. They haven't been fantastic from three in the series either, and 47% from the field. So the shooting splits are very similar. But they got 85 shots off. The Knicks got 76 shots off. That's Those are those effort, extra effort plays. Who wants it more? It's embarrassing from New York, quite frankly. It's unacceptable. And you got a really passionate fan base behind you, and you should know what's at stake. I, I would be very disappointed in the Knicks. How about the Stars? Bam out of the Bayou. His best game of the series for me. Really good. Dominated Robinson. 23 points, 
13 rebounds, some really good defense. He had three offensive rebounds, 10 for 17 from the field, hit a big mid-range late in the game, and he was keeping the defense honest, looking to be more aggressive. I love when he does that. No three-point attempts, but he doesn't really shoot threes. Three of five from the line, so you'd like to see him you know, make one more there. But really good game from Bam in 38 minutes. And then the main man, yet again for me, the player of the game. Let me know if you think it was Bam, Heat fans, or anyone that watched the game. But 27 points, six rebounds, 10 assists, two steals, and two blocks. Nine for 17 from the field. Only three three three-point attempts. So again, showing you cocksuckers that it's not just about shooting threes in this NBA. You can still dominate. MJ wouldn't be that great because you couldn't shoot threes like that. Suck my dick, dude. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Jimmy Butler was amazing. 27, 6, and 10. 9 for 17 in 42 minutes. 8 for 9 from the line. He continues to be, for me, the best player in this postseason. Top 10 player in the league. The Heat got this. It's a wrap. I don't know if it's ending in 5. The Heat are going to win in 6, though. And so are the Lakers.